everyone, I'm Rob and welcome to the test drive. Today, I'm driving the 2017 Chevy Impala Premier. So the Chevy Impala, or Chevy Impala, however you want to pronounce it, comes in three different trim levels. You have the base LS, the mid-level LT, and then the top level Premier, which is what I'm driving today. Now this Impala is fortunately powered by the V6 engine. There's also a four-cylinder Impala as well, which is not turbocharged or anything. Um, both engines, both options are naturally aspirated. So I'm really happy to be driving the V6 today instead of the inline four cylinder. Now the Impala is Chevy's full size sedan. So it is larger than the midsize Malibu and it competes against cars like the Ford Taurus, the Dodge Charger, the Nissan Maxima, this generation of the Impala was completely redesigned for the 2014 model year. And prior to the 2014 model year, it was like Impalas were really just for rental car fleets and for, you know, company car fleets, things like that. It wasn't, you know, there were a lot of people that had them, but it wasn't, you know, didn't have that excitement factor that other cars that it competed against had. It really was that car that, you know, you were very likely to get when you walked onto the rental car lot. And that's not really the case anymore with this redesign. So we're gonna start with the exterior. The Premier is obviously, at least in my opinion, the best looking Impala that you can buy. The Premier really is a very attractive car. It's, it's designed very well. You have large rims. You have dual exhaust. It has great angles. I love the look of the front. It's quite aggressive looking. You get a lot of chrome. This is just a very well designed car from the exterior. I think that the Maxima is certainly a better looking car in this space, but it, it definitely to me looks better than the Taurus. Um, really doesn't look better than the Charger. I like the look of the Charger better. Uh, but again, it's an attractive car. Now the interior of the 2017 Impala Premier is also very comfortable. I mean, I, I really am impressed with the quality and the detail that was put into the interior of this car. I mean, it, it's very nicely designed. You have very nice big buttons. I love the look of the climate control, especially um, in low light. You know, the gauges look good. Uh, the touch screen looks good and it's very comfortable. I mean, these are very comfortable, soft leather seats. I wish that the headrests um, were more comfortable. They're really not. It feels like it has something hard in the middle of it, which is unfortunate. Um, the headrests actually, to me, they kind of suck, but everything else is very comfortable. Another area that could be improved in the interior would be the steering wheel. It's not very soft. I don't particularly like the look of it. I think it it looks almost identical to the steering wheel in the Chevy Tahoe, uh, you know, which is a very large full-size SUV. Uh, you know, it just shouldn't really have the same steering wheel and, and it's just, this one isn't very sporty. It's, it's just not very nice looking. And it doesn't feel that great either. Ford steering wheels are much softer. But this car does have plenty of room. I can sit behind myself with absolutely no issue. You know, somebody significantly larger than me could also sit behind me and have no issues. It's a very roomy car. It's very comfortable. It also rides very smoothly. I mean, that's something where I 
think about the Maxima, uh, and the Impala does have a smoother ride. I mean, you don't feel bumps. It, it just, it feels very good. It's very comfortable on a long trip. That's what I did today with it. You also have a pretty large trunk, as you would expect in, in a vehicle this size. It's not huge, but it is big enough to fit whatever you would want to put in there in terms of suitcases, golf bags. Won't have any issues with the Impala in that department. Now getting to the technology in this car, there's a lot of features that come standard with this 2017 Impala Premier. The touchscreen is not my favorite. I really don't like the design of the MyLink infotainment system very much. It's okay, but I think that the Uconnect system in you know the Dodge and Chrysler and Jeep vehicles is much better, as well as Ford's Sync 3 system is much better than this Chevy MyLink system. I really think it's due for an update. Um, you can get Apple CarPlay in this car though, and uh, you know that makes it very nice. Uh, you also have this interesting feature that a lot of um, GM vehicles have where the touch screen slides up um, and this one has a USB port back there so you can actually put your phone in there and have Apple CarPlay running on the screen. You don't need to have your phone out because uh, it, you know it'll everything you need is going to be on your touch screen. The screen in between the tachometer and the speedometer also give you a lot of different options. You know, There's a lot of um, vehicle information you can look at there which I really like. Oddly enough, there's not an option to look at, at least not that I could find, for your average fuel economy. It shows instant fuel economy, but even when I went to the menu where you customize what um, items you can see in that screen, average fuel economy was not one of them. So you can only see the instant. You can look at average fuel economy on the uh, trip odometer though. So you know if you reset one of the trip odometers, you can do it there, but I'm not sure why there's not a standalone option for it. There's also a ton of safety features in this car from uh, the blind spot monitoring to lane departure warning. And uh, one thing that I really like is the rear cross traffic alert. It's really nice when you're backing up and you got the backup camera. It'll also beep um, and show you in the direction that a car is coming. And that brings me to what's most important to me, and that is the performance of the 2017 Impala Premier. So once again, I was very happy to have the V6 version of this car and not the four cylinder because the four cylinder is not turbocharged. There's really nothing special about it. It's just a standard run of the mill, naturally aspirated four cylinder. So I was very happy to have the V6. The V6 Impala puts out 305 horsepower and 264 pound-feet of torque. That is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission and it has front-wheel drive. There is no all-wheel drive option of the Impala. I don't know why they don't just make an all-wheel drive version. I mean, you have the Taurus and um, the Dodge Charger, which are both all wheel, they're both offered in all wheel drive, and this one is not. And I feel like, you know, because of that, they're missing out on uh, on some market share there. And uh, Nissan, the same thing with their Maxima, it's front wheel drive. And another challenge with front wheel drive in this car is that you have 305 horsepower, so you're gonna burn rubber like crazy. You actually, I mean, you can't mat the gas pedal, you can't floor it and not spin your tires. Now, I, what I do like about this compared to, so let's say, the Maxima, is the fact that this car has a real transmission. The Maxima has a CVT, with that, which I just really can't stand. I mean, that's a great car, so you know, I, I guess I can tolerate it because it's the Maxima, but I love that Chevy has a real transmission in this car. And the 305 horsepower in here, I mean, this makes it a very quick car. That's 
ridiculous. That is ridiculous wheel spin. <laughs> that is so excessive. I mean, it's fun to floor it in this car. It, 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 it's good. I like it. The V6 is also rated at 28 miles per gallon, while the four-cylinder is rated at 30 miles per gallon on the highway. So for me, I don't see a reason, other than price obviously, uh, not to get the V6, because you get so much better performance. Now the main thing that I really just don't like and can't understand with the technology in this car is the fact that there's not a navigation system standard. So yes, you have Apple CarPlay, but this vehicle, at least standard, doesn't have its own navigation system, which is pretty frustrating because, you know, this is a 40,000 plus dollar car. I really don't like the manual mode in this car. I mean, you basically put it in manual and then you have these two buttons on the top of the gear lever. It's just awkward and weird. I mean, there's no paddle shifters. It just doesn't make sense. It, it really was not well designed. I think it should just be standard. I mean, the Maxima has a standard even in the base model. And uh, the Impala, I mean, this is a, a very loaded Impala. It doesn't have a moonroof, but it has pretty much everything else. Um, but it doesn't have a navigation system. Another thing that I don't understand about this car is the fact that it has an actual key when there's no place to insert a key in this car. It's a push button start, it's a proximity key to enter the car, but it still has a physical key. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the 2017 Impala Premier. I'm Rob, this is the test drive. Please feel free to like and comment on this video below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the vehicles that this competes against. Please subscribe to my channel as well that helps me make more videos. And please follow me on Instagram at the test drive NY. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon.